Hello and welcome back to the watch list for March now. January, February were two big months. I was hoping to keep March under control. And I think I managed to do that. In fact, I feel quite happy with the month of March overall. In fact, it will probably be shown in the fact that this video is a lot shorter than most of the other ones. As usual, we will jump into what I picked up this month, which shouldn't be too bad. Uh, first up, 4K for Possessor. Of course, reviews up already. I love this film. I just think it's so weird and trippy and just something just speaks to me about it. The violence is uh, unbelievable, as is the violence in Green Room. It is so uh, realistic and vicious and it feels real. You know, it doesn't have that glamorised feeling to it. It's just bloody and, and horrific. Uh, which I, I loved seeing both of these movies on 4K. Green Room is by far my favourite of the two. Loved going back to that. Friends sent me through Swamp Thing on 4K, which was so much fun going back to. It is not a great movie, but it's kind of comfortable and fun and interesting. Uh, the one Eureka release I've got for this month was uh, The Swordsman of All Swordsmen. Um, which also came with uh, The Mystery of Chess Boxing as well. Two movies. I really kind of enjoyed this. Watching uh, a bunch of Joseph Kyoi movies last year came up and down. You could tell that this was a director who was all over the place, you know, um, and I wasn't sure what to get. This was more refined, more interesting, and I had a lot more fun with this one. Now on to The Vinegar Syndrome titles I picked up this month. It's just the subscription. I didn't get anything extra, so we got Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, which, as usual, the transfers for these movies from Vinegar Syndrome was fantastic. This was a 4K disc. It looked amazing. I like it. I like the wraparound story. Some of the anthological elements of it work, but they're not memorable or fantastic or as good as say Asylum for the Amicus range. I still think it's a pretty solid movie and I did enjoy it. Um, then on to Double Pack, we had Spectres. Kind of boring, but it had Donald Pleasance. It had a great deal of um, good setup and some good atmosphere. Could have been better. Uh, I preferred Mia on this release, uh, which had some amazing kills in it. Again, not the quickest paced, but I kind of liked that one more to my sensibilities. And the best movie for me this month from Vinegar Syndrome was Singapore Sling. I wasn't sure how I was going to be on with this one because I've heard things that it's really out there, really different, um, a little bit pushing the boundaries a little bit too much. I found it really funny, really engaging. The fact that I was being talked to by the, the people in the story who were relating things that were happening in the story was really kind of quirky and fun and interesting. It was something that made me um, kind of sit up and pay attention. And although there are some little elements where they push things, I just didn't really mind it so much. It felt sort of fantastical and not as if it was in a real world. Uh, and the whole kind of aspect of noir that was all the way through it, uh, terrific. Uh, then there was the Radius releases. We had A Story Written in Water, which was a terrific movie by Yoshida about a young man's uh, coming to terms with his life, his unpending marriage, his mother's sexuality. Uh, yeah, there's a full review in the channel for that, as is a review for Tony Arzetta, which was a really good um, John Wick kind of movie. You know, man tries to leave the mob. They try to kill him and accidentally kill his family and he just gets revenge, kind of. It, the only thing about it is the ending. I just hate that ending in those kind of movies. There's just something about it that just, yeah, I just, I just don't like. And then finally, we have the Bounty Hunter trilogy, which had a killer's mission, a, the Fort of Death and Eight Men to Kill. These were terrific. I could have watched many, many more of these. In fact, if they said there was going to be a second, third, fourth set of this, 
I've seen maybe movies which they didn't. I would happily have picked them up all because they were just great fun. And that was it. 14 movies that I picked up uh, in March. Watched them all. Enjoyed them. Didn't find a bad one amongst the I was pretty much happy with, uh, with that so far. So, of course, let's dive into my Letterboxd account where we can have a look at some of the movies I kind of watched. So, let's see. Night of the Skull. I started the Spanish Bloodbath set as soon as I could because I was interested in that. Uh, this turned out to be a Jess Franco film. It turned out to be my favourite of the set, which was a huge surprise. I kind of loved it. Um, it was very tropey, very along the lines of Giallo. I like that kind of stuff. So... Ticked all the boxes for me. I then watched the 4K of Phase 4 from Vinegar Syndrome, which, you know, I, I kind of hummed and hawed when the movie was announced because I didn't feel like I really needed it in 4K. But then I kind of watched it in 4K and I felt, yeah, you know what, I'm kind of glad to get that. Uh, Phase 4 is one of those really trippy, weird movies that's just so unique. Um, it's well worth checking out. And that ending that's been removed, it's now an additional extra on this. It's such a fantastic ending. I wish it was part of the movie. Uh, then continuing with the Spanish bloodbath, we had Violent Bloodbath, uh, which is again really twisted, interesting film, full review on the channel. Starship Troopers, which I watched with my daughter. She loved it. I love going back to it. It's such a great movie. It's so over the top. The themes are in your face. They don't hide what they're, they're kind of talking about here. Uh, but there's a kind of level of fun here that you don't really get in many blockbusters where, you know, they're doing some big silly stuff just because it's going to be fun. Uh, Five Card Stud, which was a, a kind of proto-slasher western, which uh, I kind of enjoyed. Dean Martin and Robert Mitchum in that one, which was a great cast. I then uh, went to the cinema, saw June Part 2, which I really enjoyed. I'm hoping to get back and see it again. I don't think it was as good as the first part, but it took me a couple of watches in the first part to realise how fantastic that was, so I'm wondering if the second one's going to be the same. I definitely want to see it in the cinema before it leaves again. Uh, the Playgirls and the Vampire was a kind of by-the-numbers movie it didn't offer much in the form of surprises and was kind of fine but just you know that's that's where it lay just fine the fish with the eyes of gold uh, which is the most giallo title i think um out there i love that title the film was kind of funny and quirky good giallo ripoff and rounded off that spanish bloodbath set which is a great set you need to pick it up if you haven't got it i then watched one of one films disc of fear city which um, there was two cuts on the disc. One was horribly kind of butchered and one was okay. The one I watched was okay. Um, and to be honest, I kind of enjoyed the film. It was a little bit um, silly in moments, but I enjoyed that silliness. Like the boxing fight at the end against the karate killer it was ridiculous. But that's what I wanted to see at that point. The Bodyguard was a nice Sonny Chiba movie um, about a man who believes his martial arts is the best and is out to prove it and gets drawn into a mystery. Again, fine, perfectly fine. Not something I'm going to rush back to, but I did enjoy it. The Apprenticeship of Duddy Kravitz was fantastic. That was one of those movies. Sunday morning, I threw it on going, I don't know what this is going to be like, and I was hooked. It was utterly fantastic a story that i wanted more i really did when it finished i wanted to further adventures i wanted to see what this guy would do with the rest of his life um yeah just an absolute amazing one there's a full review of that coming soon tony argenta i, I kind of talked on same with green room and possessor and also the the three bounty hunter films karate killer killer's mission eight men to kill um oh sorry karate killer was not critical or was the bodyguard too, which wasn't as good as the first one. Or was it? Yeah, it was kind of like you know it didn't 
it tried to do some things that were different from the first one, and I think those were interesting choices, but I, again, it's just another movie that was fine. Nothing special. Uh, Killer's Mission, Eight Men to Kill, and Fort of Death were all part of the Bounty Hunter set. Great set. You want to pick that up. I enjoyed all of those. Swamp Thing um, on 4K was, yeah, that is what it is. It's a comfort watch for me. It's not a great movie, but I do enjoy it. Newman's Law finished off the George Pippard set from Imprint, and it was pretty solid. I also watched The Continental, the three kind of episodes that were feature length. That started off really strong. Second episode was so tedious and boring, and the third one was, it, it tried to kind of pull it back. It was fine. I'd watch more, but I wasn't overly enamoured with it. Um, you know, it was decent. Probably the best thing I could say. The Swordsman of All Swordsmen was, like I said, pretty great. Mystery of Chase Boxing, which was the additional movie, um, was, again, decent enough. Uh, very familiar in the form of kind of uh, Asian martial arts movies of the time. Uh, but I'm comfortable with that. Story written in water was great, as we touched upon. I dove into the Primetime Panic 2 box set with the death of Richie. There's something kind of great about these made-for-TV movies from the 70s and 80s. Now, not all of them are fantastic, but the ones they've picked out for these Primetime Panic sets have been really enjoyable. And there is some amazing performances on show here. And it is a movie that kind of hits hard right near the end of it. There's a constant building of dread and tension and you kind of know where the movie's headed, and you just, like, how are we going to get there? It's just, oh. uh, Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire. Now I'm kind of out of the circle of reviews of modern movies that's out there. I know this one has had a, a, a kind of dividing opinion. I enjoyed it. It was uh, exactly what I expected. I think I preferred it to Afterlife. It just jumped straight into the story. They're back in New York. They've got a lot of characters from the originals back in it again. Yeah, I would go and see a third one. The Seduction of Gina, which was um, the kind of last movie in the Primetime Panic set. I kind of jumped about in this set. And I wasn't sure what I was going to get here, but it definitely wasn't what I expected. The Seduction of Gina is all about Gina who is seduced by gambling and gets drawn into that. And it was such, like, you know, it wasn't what I was expecting, but again, became another uh, enjoyable movie where I literally hated the main character and every choice they were making because the film was doing such a good job of manipulating me. It just made me want to like, tell her to wake up. Um, Gods of Egypt was a, a Netflix watch one night because we you know, wanted something easy, didn't have to pay attention to. I like Gods of Egypt. It is big, brash, complete nonsense. Switch your brain off and just enjoy. I I've watched this a couple of times and I'll probably watch it a few more times to go on this because it's just an easy watch. Uh, Mia was, and Spectres were the two Italian horrors from Vinegar Syndrome. Dr. Terror's House of Horrors was the Amicus anthology movie I've talked about. Singapore Sling. Uh, I'm going to go back and watch that again because that's a, a kind of interesting movie. I think there's more inside uh, that one to kind of dig into. The Anson's Woods, which was uh, The Forest of the Wolf, I think was the other title, which was from the Villages of the Damned Vinegar Syndrome set. I liked this one a good, a good chunk because it was very unexpected. It was about a man um, who was having these epileptic fits it was about a serial killer. It was about theories that someone is a werewolf within this town. We have this man kind of moving from village to village, uh, trading things and just kind of eke out an existence. And it just offered me a wealth of characters that I enjoyed, a situation I was fascinated with and an idea of epilepsy being a kind of precursor to um, thinking about werewolves, you know, when people were having that kind of fit. Uh, yeah, yeah, really kind of enjoyed that. Primetime Panic set again was Incident at Crest Ridge, and this was the most, I'd say, formulaic of all three of the movies. You know exactly what's going to happen as it starts. 
women and her husband move to a small town. They see some injustices within the sheriff's department and she decides that she's going to clean up the town and go to be sheriff. It doesn't go that easy. Um, but the performances are fun. Uh, you're kind of waiting to see how it's going to wrap up. And to be honest, the wrap up wasn't that great. Still enjoyed it. Uh, again, another Netflix watch was Ace Ventura. As where it is. I took the kids to see Kung Fu Panda 4, which I enjoyed more than I expected. Uh, I think we all enjoyed it because it had a kind of funny rendition of Crazy Train midway through it. Hellfighters from Indicator was a strange one. It's a John Wayne movie and it's a movie that was a little bit long. Uh, Wendy, I, I wasn't a great fan of the kind of drama they tried to create between the story of the characters, but every time it goes to their job, because they're, they're firefighters for oil wells, you know, when they burst into flames or explode that, these guys go in and fix it, and the idea of them going in there and solving these problems was fascinating, and the way they shot it and showed you the sort of way they went about it was so interesting. Every time they go to one of these situations, I was hooked. When you went back to the kind of drama aspects, it was like, it was what it was. Audrey Rose, I hadn't seen before, and I, I, I checked this one out, and it's about a couple with a child, Ivy, um, Anthony Hopkins turns up and says that their daughter Ivy is reincarnated person of his daughter Audrey Rose who died in a fire. And the more I think about it, the more I actively hate this movie. It was one that I, I kind of enjoyed. It was fine, it had some good atmosphere and then went off the rails with the second half. But the kind of preachy finale really left a bad taste. And the, I, honestly, the more I think about this, the more I actively dislike the film. Uh, I have not filmed a review for that one yet, so that is definitely going to tinge it when I get to it. Getting into the cinema for Godzilla, X-Kong, The New Empire. Uh, completely bonkers, and I appreciated that. Logic has clearly left the building here, and I couldn't be more happy. Again, we get moments of Godzilla just stomping about doing hee-haw for most of the movie. Um, and we have Godzilla trying to find a family of some sort. Uh, minimal human action, which was kind of good. We're in the middle world or whatever the hell they call it. Uh, there were some good laugh out loud moments and it's not intentional on the film's behalf. I had a great deal of enjoyment with it. It was incredibly silly over the top and stupid. It's kind of how I want these movies to be. Uh, and that was my wrap up for March. Numbers. It's time to get the numbers. And so I started off with 244 movies in the watch pile. At the start of March, I added 14 to that. And I watched 31. So I got my watch pill down to 227. Now, it's not a big improvement, but it's an improvement. And it's an improvement I'm wanting to build on. I'm going to build on it at the start of the April. I've got a few movies I need to watch. Um, I've not really picked up anything as yet. Someone has sent me a movie, which is up here, which I'm going to watch as soon as I finish this, which is... The Return of Swamp kind of thing on 4K, which I can't wait to check out. Um, and yeah, just keep on ploughing through the movies. I feel it's been a better month all in. I have lowered that watch pile. I'm going to continue that. There's not going to be many to pick up this month. So let's jump in and have a look at what is coming this month. So uh, what has caught my eye? So, all the way up to April the 15th before we get uh, The Borderlands, which, yeah, I want to see, and Killer Nun. I do like shameless stuff. Uh, the films are pretty great, so that's no doubt going to be something I'll really enjoy uh, if I get to it. Uh, and then we're up to April the 22nd, where we have Black Mask from Eureka. 
the Cat and the Canary, which I've been waiting so long to check out. Uh, the Inspector wears skirts three and four. I've not watched the first one yet. I'm in no rush to get these as yet. Uh, the Beast in the Cellar, I've heard mm, interesting. The Shockwaves, I was really interested, but a few of you guys kind of put me off a little bit. So that may be a sale purchase further down the line. Gator, I think I'm going to have to get that. Um, I do like Burt Reynolds, uh, and it's the kind of movie that just speaks to me a little bit. And we are on to April 29th, where we've got um, some Radiance releases. We've got Suzu River, uh, Lemur Fu, which is a long, long movie. I'm going to make uh, space one night for that. The Shape of the Night and The Boss, uh, which are all interesting to me. China O'Brien 1 2 is the movie of the month. I cannot wait to get my hands on that. And then we have Footprints from Shameless at the end of this month as well. Yeah, do you know what? Not a busy month at all. So let's just go through quickly once again. We'll just size up what I'm getting. Borderlands, Killer Nun, maybe. Uh, Black Mask, Cat and the Canary, definitely. Gator, very probably. April is my birthday month. So maybe I'll squeeze a couple of movies out of other people. Um... The Radiance titles, yes. China O'Brien, absolutely cannot wait to get that. Um, and yeah, yeah, so not a great deal of movies. There is one other thing that is coming, though, that gets me a little bit worried, and that is the indicator sale. Now, in the past couple of sales, I've limited myself to maybe five, six movies. I feel like doing much the same this time, so I won't be picking up too many. Uh, I may even come back and do a video for that if you guys are interested. You can let me know in the comment box if you want to see some picks that I think you should get from the indicator sale and if you plan to pick up anything whatsoever. So there you go. You drop some comments in the comment box below. We can have a little chit chat about um, things that I'm interested in, things you're going to pick up in the coming month and our few are going to be taking part in the indicator sale, which is coming Monday. As always, there is more content up here. You can see more of my stuff in the description box below are links to Patreon, Membership Program, and manvfilm.com. Always in which you can support. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.